All right, we're recording. Welcome to class, everybody. And we are in week uh, three, I think. Is this week three? Week No, week four. Week four of class. And it is awesome to have you guys back here today. We have um, a, I've got a special uh, presentation lined up for you. And today we're going to talk about um, the uh, give you a little introduction to structural engineering. And, and one of our structural engineering faculty, Dr. Fernando Fonseca, he's from Brazil, um, he pre-recorded a lecture for you guys that we're gonna to watch together here. Uh, but before I get started on that, I wanted to address um, a couple of questions on project number two. Uh, I'm really happy that it sounds like most of you have gotten a head start on project number two. And that is the um, that is the project in which you are designing a bridge, and a bridge that will carry a heavily loaded truck across a gorge, the gorge of death. And so um, you guys get to design that, and we're we're having a little friendly competition. Um, Sister Frankie is here in the background, and she doesn't know this yet, but I promise that I would take the three winning teams to uh, Booker's Ice Cream uh, from, so the, the winning is defined as having the lowest cost bridge that can still get the truck across uh, in the specifications provided. So um, yeah, it's on like Donkey Kong and, and you guys are, are gonna have at it because if you haven't been to Booker's Founding Father's Ice Cream, it's, uh, it's pretty good. So what I wanted to do though is um, give uh, an opportunity for you guys to ask what questions that you have. Right now, um, everybody's muted, but um, if uh, you do have a question, you can just raise your hand and, and, and I'll uh, call on you. Um, Gustavo did have a question that, in the comments that I want to address, he, he asked, uh, Dr. Frankie, how much can a bridge dip in our project? Um, so I'm, I'm assuming this relates to the requirement that I said that the bridge deck needs to be at, at 24 feet um, or meters. I can't remember which one it is. It's 24 or whatever the units of measurement were on that bridge. Um, the 24 only refers to the ends of the bridge. The, the middle is going to sag when the load goes over it. And the program is, is designed in such a way that it really exaggerates the sag. So, I mean, if, if it's gonna do it right, if, if you have a competitive bridge, your bridge is gonna sag so far down, it's gonna look ridiculous. And you're gonna go, I don't know how that truck's gonna drive up the other side, but it does. And um, it, it, no, the bridge doesn't actually do that, right? But those displacements are really exaggerated um, so that you can learn and see where deformation is occurring in the bridge. So don't worry about the sag or the dip in the bridge. Just get the two ends of the bridge deck right where they are. If you start with the template that I gave to you as part of the project, then that bridge deck is already where it needs to be. But you'll see that if you run it, the template as is what? that hey okay so my family's here and everyone's being loud and noisy i apologize um if you run it with that bridge with that truck running across the bridge you're going to see that 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 bridge hardly moves at all because that's like the avengers bridge right that bridge is not that bridge is meant to hold like the space shuttle or something it, it can hold some serious weight your job is to make that bridge much more affordable because you'll see the bridge I gave you is crazy expensive. So, um, okay, uh, some other questions. I have Maxwell here. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Maxwell. Um, so when I tried downloading the template that you gave us, it wouldn't mm -hmm. allow me to do that. Um, is that. That's just on the project assignment, right? Yeah, so you just should be able to save the file somewhere onto your onto your computer. Okay. And then you open up the bridge design software. And then um, once you're in that software, open the file. Okay. And just navigate gotcha. to where you save that file. Gotcha. And then my second question is like, where can we go? Like, are there other resources we can go just to learn more about bridge design and what's effective and what isn't? Um, 
That's a great question. There's, I mean, if you just do a Google search on some basics about bridge design, you'll, you'll find a lot of stuff. But the, the program's designed for you to just be really curious and explore yourself. So there, there's not a lot you can do to change things. Um, so you can change the size of different members. You can make them hollow. You can make them solid. You can change the material that they're made out of. And you'll see that all of these little changes that you do will have an effect on the performance of the bridge, but also the cost of the bridge. So it's intended for you to kind of explore and learn yourself what kinds of things you can do to make the bridge cheaper. Some people will go all out and do this like elaborate arch bridge. It's really, really beautiful, but they never win because it's crazy expensive, but you get thumbs up from me because it looks really pretty. Um, other people will do like under trusses uh, beneath the bridge. Some do over trusses, so the trusses are above the bridge deck. Um, there's some people, you'll notice if you look at the template that um, if, if, you, if you look at the edges of the bridge but go back a little bit, you'll see these little white nodes just stuck there in the ground, but they're just sitting there. That would be if you wanted to add a cable to um, and, and design a cable stay bridge, you could do a cable bridge. And so there's lots of different alternatives that you could do. Um, in the past, students tried to cheat by digging down and excavating so that the bridge deck was down like at an elevation of five feet above the water. But if you get down there, the span of the bridge is like teeny. So uh, those bridges were really cheap and they thought they were going to win. And I was like, yeah, it's great job right until the boat runs right into your bridge and takes it out. So that's the problem, right? You got to keep the bridge up above the, the water so that stuff can go underneath the bridge. Okay, um, did that the answer your question? Yeah, the template's on Learning Suite, right? Yeah, so if you click on uh, project number two on Learning Suite and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a download link for the template. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Ammon, go ahead and unmute yourself. Ask your question. Okay, so my question is, um, I was looking through the system and I could start a new template. Do we have to use the template we've been given or can we change it, not to alter the elevation of the bridge because I know that the road has to stay whatever amount above the water, but can we change it so that it has like, like there are two different things. There's the one where it's just straight across and there are the two joists at the end. There's also one where it's like, the two things on the side that support it go down and then there's another thing where you can make like an arch under it. Mm -hmm. Are we allowed to change it and use that one? Change, yeah, change whatever you want. Just keep the elevation of the bridge deck at the original elevation. Okay. You wanna change then, the format of the bridge, you wanna do whatever, go ahead. Just er, any change you make, adjust the cost. And then one more question. There is something where you could put a support <coughs> in the middle of the river. Are we allowed to do that or no? Since the boat wouldn't be able to go past that. Yeah, because then the boat can't get through. Yeah, okay. so, so yeah, that's, that's another way students in the past have tried to jimmy rig this thing is they, they try to put a bent right in the middle of the bridge. And uh, that, that, that shortens the span and allows you to use much smaller members and things. But um, yeah, again, it, it's a good idea if you don't have the constraints. Got but, it. Yeah, we need ships to get under there. So um, we're going to say no, no on that one. Okay. Okay, a couple more questions. Griffin. Yeah, what's the cheapest bridge you've ever seen that, like, fit the constraints? Oh, uh, so I haven't taught this class for, like, three years. So I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, you know what, let me, I'm gonna pull up here on my files and see if I can find it. Um, let's see, just bear with me for a second. Um, poster project, Teams. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I seem to recall we had one, I, I remember one team got it under $200,000, which 
was like, yeah, I see a lot of big, wide open eyes. <laughs> yeah, their bridge was, was like held together by duct tape and bailing wire. <laughs> but it worked. It was amazing. So uh, that I, I remember it was right around the $200,000 mark. And I think they just barely got it beneath there. So um, that I think that was the, the record holder so far. Okay, uh, go ahead, Griffin. Sorry, just one more thing. Like there, <laughs> there are templates online, and I'm not saying that I used any of them that can get you to under 200k. Like, what is your stance on that? Just to make sure. Um, you know, I say if it meets the criteria, that's fine because I'm not sure if those templates are going to meet the criteria that I've laid out um but if they do then i i don't have anything against that um you know uh you but you know that that's right along the lines of the of the dad who who mail ordered his son's pinewood derby car right and so yeah, yeah. no I'm, <laughs> I'm not suggesting it as a good idea i just want to make sure that <laughs> We're on like no, but, playing field. but I have nothing against like if you want to look those up and you want to see what makes them a great bridge, then go for it. Um, yeah. that, you know, that's some of the best, most effective way to learn, I think. OK, um, because we want to get going with our lesson. There's three more questions. So let's hurry and get through these. Darren McKay and Abby. All Darren, right. Go. So um, I was going to ask, you said it has to be 24 up. Uh, you also mentioned something in an email, I believe you sent out, that we could have members underneath the bridge, members and trusses underneath the bridge. Um, yes, yeah, so underneath the deck, but you can't have like a bent, a support going all the way down to the river. Okay, because I, I put trusses underneath and I was like, uh-oh, I already sent it in, but it's good to know I can have trusses. I didn't put a support in the middle of the river. Yeah, so, so you can have under trusses, you can have over trusses. All I care about is that the bridge deck is at, at the right elevation so that the span, the, the width of the span is the same. So everybody is playing with the same. Uh, I, I, used, I used an arch and it made the span a little bit shorter by putting dirt on each side. Yeah, it's fine. As long as your elevation is there, because you'll spend more money making, you know, um, aesthetic components like the arch but um that's fine yeah don't worry about that okay um mckay um so i was just i i think he was asking the same thing but i was just wanting to clarify it it is okay for like the under trusses to be shorter than 24 like yep. the members and things you put under Mm hmm okay yep yep all i care about is the bridge deck <laughs> i mean it will be interesting to, <laughs> to see what you guys come up with that maybe i'll have to change the rules for next year but we'll see um okay abby so when you run the test and it shows like the different colors like the red and the blue for like fresh mm -hmm. and stuff like that does it have can we have any of those colors like is it okay if there's some like how much should there be yeah so the colors are for your education Okay. So you can see how stress is distributed through the trusses as the truck moves across the bridge. So just pay attention and watch. Like you'll see one member go into compression and keep watching that member. Then later you'll see it go into tension or vice versa. And, and that's because all those stresses are being distributed through those triangular elements of the trusses. So it's just intended to show you um, how the uh, um, the stresses are being distributed as the truck goes across the bridge. Um, in your 300 level classes in 321 in civil engineering, you guys will learn how to calculate that stuff by hand and to be able to make those calculations on your own. The problem happens when um, the stress becomes too great in one of those members. And, and that's what happens when you see a member break and the whole bridge collapses and the truck, you know, dies and everyone has a fiery death. Uh, that's what we're trying to avoid. So as long as the, the truck makes it across the bridge, we're good. Yeah. 
yeah, so for the winning bridges, I'm looking for some really sketchy, scary looking stuff. So, okay. Um, all right, so let's get started with uh, Dr. Fonseca's lesson here. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna share my screen with you all. Um, I'm going to mute everybody and um, we're gonna watch the rest of this lecture and, and it will take probably the rest of our time today but um, I'll be happy to stay on a little bit longer for those who want to. And, um, and answer any questions that you have. In the meantime, let's, um, if everyone will raise their hands right now, and we'll take roll at the start here of uh, doing our, our uh, presentation here today. All right, so um, I'm gonna hit share here and uh, then it's gonna broadcast the sound. So um, this is our beloved Dr. Fonseca who couldn't physically be here with us today, but um, he, he pre-recorded this message for you guys. Good morning, oh, good afternoon students. My name is Fernando Fonseca, Dr. Fonseca. Um, I am uh, a faculty uh, in the department, and I uh, typically teach uh, civil engineering structures um, classes. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, um, and I have been at BYU for about 25 years as a professor. So today we will be talking about the structural, structural engineering. So let me share uh, my screen with you. Uh, first, of, we'll watch a, a, a video, and then I will uh, talk about uh, structural engineering in general. I am, and ever will be, a White Sox pocket protector nerdy engineer. Born under the second law of thermodynamics, seeped in the steam tables, in love with free body diagrams, transformed by Laplace and propelled by compressible flow. As an engineer, I take a substantial amount of pride in the accomplishments of my profession. Science is about what is, engineering is about what can be. An engineer's entire existence is dedicated to doing things better and more efficiently. It is a profession which leaves its imprint on our society in countless ways. A century ago, the world really needed improvements in quality of life, health, mobility, and living standards. At that time, life was a constant struggle. The 20th was a century often punctuated with the terror of war and darkened with society struggles to overcome injustice. But the 20th was also the first century in which technology enabled the tenets and the images of those traumas to reach across the world and touch people in ways that were previously unimagined. Engineering helped create a world in which no injustice could be hidden. Many will look back to see how we have changed and what we have accomplished. The future's a bit foggy, but it's not unreasonable to suggest that the 21st century will enjoy a rate of progress not unlike the 20th. It's something to hope for. As I said, today uh, I will expose you a little bit about structural engineering. Um, we will talk about uh, traditional structural engineering and, uh, and uh, structures that have been um, used for other purposes rather than uh, just uh, uh, traditional uh, civil structural engineering. Um, if you if you think about um, where you are at this instance, you're probably sitting on a chair, uh, maybe on a couch, um, may, maybe laying down your bed. Uh, uh, I, I hope you're not driving. 
but even if you're driving, uh, all these things, the chair, uh, the sofa, the bed, and the car, they, they have structures. Um, in, in your simple chair there that you're sitting, um, maybe there are four legs. Uh, imagine if uh, one of those legs uh, are broken, you'll be falling um, to the ground. So uh, uh, structures are the bones and muscles uh, that, that gives uh, the form and shape of, uh, of um, man-made structures. Um, but uh, uh, as you look at, at the nature, uh, a tree is a structure in one sense. A cave is a structure, uh, except that these are non, uh, not man-made structures, but uh, but they are structures. So, uh, I will give you some some examples of. Uh, uh, main made structures um, we'll start with uh, old ones and then we'll progress to more modern ones uh, this one is in in peru uh, some of you may have been there i was fortunate that i visited there my wife likes to travel so we went to that place and it's a beautiful place uh, and um, this is this is a closer look of of uh, of that city, uh, which sits on top of a mountain, uh, and there are many uh, larger uh, facilities, small facilities, uh, different shapes. Uh, these are made of um, of a stone. Uh, one place on top of the other, um, and uh, yes, it's it's not used to today but you can see uh, the the remains of uh, of this city uh, this is another structure um, that serves a different purpose um, uh, and the purpose he was to cross the river um, and was formed by a bridge uh, where the first level here uh, was used for large uh, chariot, chariots and horses, uh, the second level uh, for people to walk, and the third level uh, to transport water. So, so this is a structure that had uh, multiple uses. Um, and uh, if you are at this location here, right in the middle, well, that load uh, that, that you create must be transferred somehow to the piers uh, and then from the piers to the foundations, from the foundations to the ground. If any of this, uh, the, any of uh, element in this path is um, weak or destroyed or removed, uh, there is a probability that you will not be standing here but will be uh, down here. So, so when you when we talk about structures, the structures typically transfer forces from one location to another location. Um, and you would learn that as you progress in your career and you can, uh, uh, and you'll take classes that will teach you how to do those things. Um, this is another structure. Uh, over here we have a spiral and then a mosque. Uh, the mosque resembles the spiral. Uh, and the spiral here is made of um, a brick, uh, one on top of the other. Uh, uses some sort of a mortar uh, to glue, to hold those, those uh, small parts together. Uh, over here we have this um, Mosque where uh, the, 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 these smaller elements are put together one on top of the other and they serve both as, as the structure as well as they give appearance or beauty to, to, the, to the building. Uh, this is a pyramid in, uh, in Mexico. Uh, made out of uh, blocks of uh, stone, stone blocks, one on top of the other. Uh, I am not 100% sure on this one, but some of these uh, have mortar between the blocks 
or, or the stones, and some of, the, of them do not have uh, blocked uh, mortar uh, between them. At the time of this uh, photo was taken, uh, people could not walk uh, up to the top uh, due to the deteriorating uh, of the structure. Uh, this is very famous. I hope you recognize this one. It's a structure. It's a tower. Uh, and uh, this tower is made of uh, smaller pieces of uh, steel, either rivet or bolted together uh, to form uh, this, this uh, uh, tower. Uh, loads of transfer uh, from, from each element down here, but you can see here, you still have some sort of an arch similar to the, the bridge that we saw in France. Uh, well, that uh, stone bridge, but but if you're here, uh, there's there's some sort of a restaurant here. Uh, so if you if you go here, uh, well, the, the load is again transferred from all these elements to this arch and from this arch to these uh, columns and goes to the ground and, and a structural engineer uh, is typically responsible to uh, size or to engineer these, these elements and uh, to uh, engineer the connection of the elements so the loads are then transferred from point A to point B. And not only grab the load, uh, but also if, for example, there is wind, the wind uh, may be pushing this structure laterally as you push the structure in one direction or the other. You can see if the the wind pushes this structure from right to left, well, there's a tendency of this here to uplift or to rotate and have a pivot point here as well. Therefore, this, this part of the structure would be needed, will be uh, designed to resist some tension force, while this part would be resistive for compression. Well, if we reverse the wind, uh, now I have I would have some sort of a compression force in this end and tension there. So so the, the element needs to be designed to carry those forces. Uh, this is uh, a, a dome. Uh, it's it's a uh, structure where we have these towers and then you can see hopefully you are able to see the cables here uh, and, and this is a fabric structure so the fabric uh, are connected to the tower through these um, cables and the cables are tension so the fabric has its shape uh, and it, it must resist uh, the loads that apply the the snow loads the uh, dead loads and and what not those things that, that there may be things that are supported from the inside of the structure that also needs to be supported so this is a more modern structure in the uk uh, this is a beautiful structure in Sydney, uh, the Opera House, um, and it has all these these shells that are that have been designed uh, to give a form, uh, and uh, and has been designed this way because of sound and and at the same time it's for aesthetic uh, reasons. It's a beautiful structure. And uh, since it's close to the ocean, uh, there may be a lot of wind sometimes, and uh, the wind can be, again, be caught into, into one of these uh, shells. And you can see that the tendency, if, if there's a heavy wind, it would be to lift this umbrella type of structure. Therefore, the connections in the bottom here must be such that uh, it resists that uplift. Um, some of you may have been there. Uh, some of you may have may uh, may have the opportunity to listen to the opera there. Um, this is uh, uh, another structure uh, in Arizona, um, and 
it uh, holds all that water there. Uh, it's a very tall structure made of uh, reinforced concrete, very thick in the base and not as thick in the top, but it's still very thick. And at the same time, we have this bridge here that we can see up uh, in the front, you can see here where uh, the support of this arch is connected to the rock and then there's another piece there. But, but as you see here, uh, we have two structures here, not only the, the dam itself, um, but, but the, the bridge that is, uh, is shown here. Uh, both of these must be designed to resist different loads. For example, the bridge people drive, your trucks drive, and, and if the tr truck is right here, uh, if one of these elements fail, well, the truck will end up here, which is not a good thing, uh, because I think this is pretty high, maybe 300 feet or so. So, uh, Therefore, this arch must be designed to resist the load that's being applied there. Well, this, this uh, structure here must resist a different load. The pressure uh, of the wall of the water in the other side would tend to um, make the structure coming towards us as you're looking at that structure. And, um, and this is, is made to uh, make a pond or, or a lake or a reservoir such that then we can harvest the energy of the water drop and create, generate uh, energy, which is a good thing. Um, again, different structures, different purposes, different materials. Uh, the bridge is made of uh, steel elements. Uh, the, the dam is made of concrete. Uh, one is, is very thin, the other one is very thick. Uh, and a structural engineer uses different materials to um, design the different structures to accomplish uh, their um, uh, purpose, which is to transfer loads from one place to another. As you think about again, as I mentioned, the load here is, is pretty much a, a gravity load uh, and the load that must be transferred this way to that way. Over here, the water is uh, pushing the, the, the concrete structure towards us. So there is a little not a little, but 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 the the shape of this is more like an arch in that way, such that the force then is transferred also from there to the supporting element, which is in this case these rocks. Uh, this is. Uh, no longer the tallest building in the world, but it was one of the tallest buildings. It is one of the tallest buildings in the world. And you can see there are many large buildings, uh, but, but this is um, a large, very large building. And you can Google this thing and see how tall these things are. Uh, but there is a structure uh, must be designed to resist uh, the gravity load, which is down, but also the wind load that's pushing this thing back and forth. Uh, structure engineers design, engineer those elements such that uh, as, as these, these uh, building sways back and forth, the elements can resist those uh, forces and then transfer from story to story the forces until it uh, goes to the ground. You can see that uh, if one of those elements fail, this uh, entire structure could fail. Well, there's some redundancy there, but, but you got the idea. Uh, and, and then you see the other buildings uh, around, many, many tall buildings. Uh, another bridge here uh, made of uh, stones uh, and mortar and reinforced. Uh, you can see some of, uh, of uh, diseases allows engineers to go around and inspect those, those uh, piers and the arch. Uh, as you train go by here, again, right there, 
uh, the structure must be designed to resist the gravity load and then it's transferred uh, to the foundation of the spears, um, a beautiful structure. Some some of you may have had the opportunity to go there, uh, and and this is a beautiful picture. You can see another uh, little um, road there and some houses there. Uh, but this is uh, a structure again made out of different material. Not only this is a structure, but the, the train itself is a structure. Uh, it has uh, a structure to hold uh, people inside. Another bridge made out of a different material. Uh, this is a cable uh, suspension bread, bridge. You can see here the bridge, the bridge itself is suspended by cables. There's this vertical these vertical cables that are attached to this uh, other cable uh, and, uh, and and this structure must be designed such that uh, not only gravity load is resisted but also wind is go uh, across so this is one of the largest uh, bridges in the world, uh, the longest central span bridge. Uh, some of you will uh, want to design bridges. Uh, we do have courses that teach you how to design bridges. Uh, and we do have courses that teach you how to design buildings and, and other structures. Again, some of you may have been there and had the opportunity to go across this, this bridge. Um, we, we have been talking about typical or traditional civil engineering structures, but there are many structures in the mechanical engineering world. And, and there is, there is a, a part of these two worlds that meet. And uh, there are many, many civil mechanical structures. And the principles uh, to design, the, the, the principles that govern the design of, uh, of those structures, either civil engineering or mechanical engineering are the same. For example, we teach courses, the mechanical engineers take those courses and the mechanical engineering department teaches courses that some of our students take. And, um, and I'll show you some examples here. Uh, this is a, uh, a structure. Uh, not only the, 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 the Atlantis is, is a structure, but, but all of these things are structures. We as civil engineers do not design the propulsion system of this, but we are involved in, in many aspects in the design of the frame structure of all these components, as well as, as the structures that is supporting uh, the, uh, the spacecraft and, and rocket boosters and those things. So, so structural engineering, either coming from a civil engineering background or mechanical engineering background, could be involved in designing structures like this. Uh, again, we will not be, uh, uh, we do not have the background to design the, the combustion system of this, of this uh, rocket boosters, but, but besides that, we could be involved in and design other parts of this. And this is a, a, a multidisciplinary uh, endeavor, not only uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, chemical engineers, uh, structural engineers are involved on, on, on this process. Uh, this, is, this is another uh, more modern structure. It's, it's an oil platform uh, and you have here concrete as well, a lot of you still. So it's it's almost like a little world <laughs> in itself. Uh, and and structural engineers coming from 
the civil engineering, the civil engineering departments uh, help in, in design some of these structures. Um, as, as you see here, let's see here. This is the biggest above water in the world. It's about 200,000 tons. It can work under its own power uh, down to minus 47, minus 47 degrees Fahrenheit and can uh, withstand chunks of floating ice up to six feet thick and waves of up to 60 feet high. Um, uh, Structural engineers, civil engineers coming from civil engineers design these things. Um, okay, so if you if you are interested in doing things like this, uh, this is the right place to be. Uh, you will learn if if you uh, uh, stay with us. You will learn how to design how well. You will learn the principles to design these structures. We will not uh, be getting into detail about this, but you you. You, you have the background to take employment uh, on companies that design these type of things. A car, a car uh, also has a structure. You can see here, you have the frame of the car uh, and, and that is designed by uh, structural engineers coming either from civil engineering background or mechanical engineering background. Uh, the, the principles are the same. Uh, and, and you can see that uh, if you're sitting here, uh, if a car hits you by the side, you want to make sure that this frame, whatever the frame is, will be able to take some load so you are not crushed under that uh, hit. Um, so so the, 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 the elements must be designed and must be sized. When we're talking about uh, design, we're talking about two things. We're talking about the shape and, and, and the, the form of the, of the elements such that, um, that the force is transferred. If, I, if there's a hit here, the load must be transferred from here to here, from here to there, from here to there, to the, such that this then is is a self-contained structure and uh, dissipates the energy caused by that impact and the occupants of the vehicle doesn't get um, uh, serious hurt. I mean, there may be some... Uh, some um, uh, injuries, but but we we want to prevent the death and and things like that, and that's and the same thing as as the car goes back and forth riding the road, uh, uh, the the force that that goes here and it should be transferred uh, up and down here, and 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 structural engineers design the frame and 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 many of the components of uh, of uh, of, uh, of a car of a vehicle. Uh, this is a beast, uh, and uh, uh, there are many uh, civil engineers that work for aerospace companies. Uh, uh, although traditionally they go to the mechanical engineering, uh, there are many civil engineers that uh, work for Boeing and, and other companies. Uh, uh, we need to design. We need to design th these this wing, which is nothing more than a beam. This is like a beam, a cantilever beam, where uh, the support of the beam is this structure, and then the load needs to be transferred there. Uh, and, and structural engineers design, helps design th things like this. Um, and uh, if, I, I cannot imagine this flying, but this they, actually flies. Uh, and there are other forces that as, as it goes back and forth, you can see that uh, the wings go up and down. So, so there is a, a, other problems that can be created at the connection of the wing to the structure of the airplane. Um, this is really a beast. It's like, wow. Um, this is this is a more practical <laughs> airplane. Some of you may even have flown on this. Uh, this is the largest airplane, and and I believe this is the the 
<laughs> the group of people that uh, was they were involved was involved the group of people that was involved in the design of this uh, Airbus 380. Uh, it is the largest airplane in the world, I think, um, commercial airplane, uh, and and again. Uh, both mechanical engineers and civil engineers having a structural engineering background uh, can work in companies like this. Uh, not designing, not designing uh, the the um, tires, not designing the electrical components, the mechanical components, the the terminals and things like that, but designing the the, the uh, bones and muscles of these airplanes such that uh, we can then place all these things. So so we 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 uh, we teach you the the uh, we give you the tools to be able to design a structure like this. Now you have been paying attention to this this monstrous uh, airplane, but take a look at the monstrous building that this monstrous airplane is is in. Uh, I mean, this is a very very large building, uh, and you can see here the columns of the building. You can see uh, the roof structure of the building. You see here. Uh, some some uh, walls where you have here. Uh, it could be that this part here where I'm showing is brick or block, and then and then you have this other part here which is some sort of uh, structural frame metal steel frame that supports uh, the load uh, since this is very big there is wind blowing on those walls and and those uh, those uh, panels must be uh, applying loads to this other elements they must transfer to these other elements and so forth so on until they are resisted by uh, by the foundation of the building so not only <clears throat> A structure engineer is not only are involved in the design of this, but also of this massive, huge building. Um, again, airplane like this have structures and structure engineers are involved on the design of, uh, of this uh, uh, airplane. Uh, there is another uh, set of uh, uh, structures that you and I may not think as traditional structure elements, but uh, structure engineers uh, are involved on uh, designing of um, tools. Uh, these are medical tools, but but there are tools that uh, you see around that uh, that they need that you have uh, a structure engineers to take a look. For example, this thing here. As, as you apply force here and this is holding something, if, if this thing is not properly designed as, as you apply force there, it could be that this piece here would break off. Uh, so, so structure engineers are, are, uh, are involved somehow on the design of these uh, structures. It could be that you're not going to design something exact like this because there's no need for that, but it could be that uh, you may be in a company that where they they want to develop a new sort of a tool to do something, and uh, and the principles the principles are uh, the same either uh, if you're designing something like this something like this or something is more like this. Uh, uh, you, you could be involved if you have the correct structure engineering background. Uh, this is a robot that uh, performs surgery. Uh, we are not uh, involved in the control of uh, these parts, uh, <laughs> but we are certainly involved on the design of the parts because uh, you don't want this to go uh, as you apply some sort of force, this he moves back and forth. Uh, and if this moves back and forth, as the load is there and you apply some sort of 
pressure here in the end. You don't want these things to fail because because this element here uh, could not handle the force that was applied. The same thing is the, the arms of the robot and the body of the robot needs to be designed uh, based on, on principles uh, that uh, structure engineers uh, learn in school. Oh, here it is, another, another structure that you may not think as a structure. Um, and, and if you're interested in bioengineering, uh, bioengineering involves a lot of structural engineering uh, because, because this is a structure. Uh, you can see here, uh, it, your leg moves. Well, your leg must transfer then the force to these sockets, and then the socket must be anchored to your hip through the bolts. Well, <laughs> if a structure engineer is not involved in this, the structure engineer, the person designing, that designed that bolt there did not have any idea of the stresses that that bolt should uh, uh, resist. Therefore, it was not properly designed. You, you don't want to do that. So you want to you want to have uh, a person that has the background and the background besides other things is also in structure engineering to make sure that uh, uh, this part can transfer uh, your movements, your jogging, your playing tennis, your swimming, whatever you're doing from your leg to your, to your hip. So, and if those things are not properly designed, they will not withstand those loads. Uh, here's another uh, view of a different of a different system. I mean, you can see here. Oh, oh you can see here. This this has a, a ball joint there that uh, performs some sort of a mechanism over here. It's a slightly different uh, format, but the concept is the same. Uh, this is uh, a knee that has been replaced using uh, bioengineering things. Uh, the doctor is the guy that performs, the doctor is the person, not the guy. He could be a female uh, doctor. Uh, the doctor performs the, the surgery where they, they place these, these uh, parts uh, in the bone. Uh, uh, and, and they use tools like saws and uh, screwdrivers and, and, and things like that to attach those elements to the bones. Uh, bioengineers are the ones that design this. And bioengineers, once again, must have a, a, a background in, in structure engineering. Uh, you, you may say, oh, I will, I will not need this. Well, as you get older, your joints start failing. And maybe when you are in your 70, 80, uh, 80s, you will need some sort of thing. I hope not, but who knows? And then you'll be really glad that a uh, structure engineer designed those things uh, because you wanted those things to last for a while. You don't have a surgery like this every every year because uh, because the material that they, sh they, they designed is was uh, poor material, poor quality material, or if the connections that they designed were not properly designed. Here are more interesting pictures of things that uh, bioengineering can do for us. Uh, you are in a situation, you're young, you may not do this, but I'm here, think, well, maybe I need one of these days, I'll need this. Uh, and, um, and we are glad that uh, both uh, engineers design this and doctors can then perform the surgery to attach this to our bones. And, uh, and then we can have a, uh, near normal life. Um, so uh, I hope I gave you some uh, um, interesting things to think about structural engineering. Uh, I think it is fa fascinating. Uh, I, I, when I drive around, I look at all the bridges, buildings. Uh, uh, when I'm fixing my car, I look at the cars and say, wow, this is amazing. Uh, when I go to the dentist, I look at the tools that he uses. Uh, when I go to the doctors, uh, I, I mean, uh, my mind, uh, I always look and say, wow, do you know that I'm glad that uh, we have uh, 
in one sense, the structural engineering in general, because uh, the idea is engineering can uh, has and can continue to improve our lives. And and I think in structural engineering is a, an exciting career, uh, and I hope you consider that. Um, I hope that uh, you will uh, consider uh, staying around, uh, taking some classes, and if you do that, you will probably take some classes from me. I teach um, 203 uh, strength materials. I teach 321 uh, structural analysis, uh, where you learn the, the methods to de determine forces uh, in, in elements. I teach uh, reinforced concrete design, where you learn how to design, how to size, uh, determine the size of uh, beams and columns uh, made of reinforced concrete. Uh, and I, I teach also a masonry structural uh, design class where you learn how to design masonry structures. Uh, stick around and you'll take some course from me. Good luck in your career. Bye. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm willing to stick around for a few minutes and answer some questions if anybody has them. Um, if everyone wants, um, I see still a lot of hands raised. I think that's probably from the roll still. But uh, if you need to go, feel free to go. But if you have some questions you'd like to ask, uh, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to answer it. Um, you can also reach out to Dr. Fonseca directly. And um, and you can uh, get your questions answered from him as well if you have more related to structural engineering um, and you want to hear directly from the expert. So um, <clears throat> with that being said, are there any questions about the presentation today or questions that you might have about structural engineering I could answer? Um, I have one. So what was the class that he taught again? So uh, Professor Fonseca teaches uh, a few undergraduate courses, 203, that's Mechanics and Materials, all of you will take that. Um, 321, Structural Mechanics, all of you will take that. Um, and then uh, he teaches a Design Elective, Reinforced Concrete, that's uh, one of the 400 level classes. And not all of you will take that, but probably most of you will. Um, I see. Yeah, so you'll see him in 203 pretty soon. Awesome, he was super cool. <laughs> oh, you had him already? No, I mean like his presentation. Like, yeah, uh, students love him, he, and he loves students. Uh, he's, he's super funny, and if, if you happen to speak Portuguese, if you try to speak Portuguese to him, he'll respond to you in English, so he's kind of funny that way, but um, yeah, he's great. Other questions? Do you speak to him in Portuguese? Um, he will respond to me in Portuguese, but I think it's a professional courtesy. He's Carioca. He's from um, Rio. So he's got that really laid back Portuguese accent. He's, it's really fun to hear him talk. All right, any other questions? Okay, if not, I'll look forward to getting your guys' project number two submittals this week. And uh, we're going to have a look at them next week, I think. So um, appreciate all your time, everybody. And I'll see you next week.